this is hs so gs upon 1 plus gs hs so if you solve that equation you will get this transfer function kgs upon 1 plus kgs hs okay so gs is some <clears throat> numerator of g upon denominator of g and hs is numerator of h and upon denominator of h so open loop transfer function is kgs hs and the closed loop transfer function is gs given by this equation so kgs upon 1 plus kgs hs this you can substitute in terms of numerator and denominator so if you write kgg numerator of gs into denominator of hs upon denominator of gs into denominator of f hs plus k into numerator of gs into numerator of hs okay so <clears throat> We can represent the root locus by vector representation of complex number. Suppose we take a complex number in Cartesian coordinates s equal to sigma plus j omega. In polar form, it can be uh, written as m angle theta, where m is the magnitude given by under root sigma square plus omega square, and theta is the angle given by tan inverse omega upon sigma. Okay, now substitute sig s as sigma plus omega into a complex function fs equal to s plus a. Okay, so you get sigma plus a plus j omega because s is sigma plus j omega. And if you if you uh, take the real, real terms together, so you will get this term. Okay, now let us consider a complex function fs in a general form. So fs is basically summation of s plus z i upon summation of s plus p j where m is the number of um, i varying from i to 1 uh, i equal to 1 to m and m is the number of zeros j varies from 1 to n where n is the number of poles okay so f s at any point s in a complex number with magnitude m and angle theta such that m is summation of zero lengths upon summation of pole lengths so basically it is sigma i varying from 1 to m s mod of s plus z i upon sigma j varying from 1 to n mod of s plus p j. And theta is the summation of zeros angle minus summation of poles angles by, by minus sign because it is poles appear in the denominator. Okay. So this if you substitute it in terms of angle form then it is sigma i varying from 1 to m angle of s plus z i minus sigma j varying from 1 to n angle of s plus p j. Okay, I want you to write this in your notebook for better understanding before proceeding further. So you can define root locus through an example. Suppose a video camera similar to that shown below can automatically follow a subject. Okay, A tracking system consists of a dual sensor and a transmitter where one component is mounted on the camera and the other one worn by the subject. Okay, An imbalance between the outputs of the two sensors receiving energy from the transmitter causes the system to rotate the camera to balance out the difference and seek the source of energy. The so-called root locus technique can be used to analyze and design the effect of loop gain upon the video camera system's transient response and stability. With the block diagram shown, we see that the closed loop poles change, lo lo change location as the gain k is varied. Applying the quadratic formula to the denominator of the closed loop transfer function, we can determine the variations of pole locations for different values of k as shown in the table. Okay, so you can uh, write this, draw this diagram and write this table. Suppose we are having this plot diagram, which is very common. This is the uh, transfer function of the amplifier. This is the transfer function of the motor and camera. And this is the open loop transfer function of the system. So this is subject's position RS given to the error detector, which is fed, the error is fed to the open loop system. And the camera position is denoted by CS, which is fed back to the 
subject's position. Okay. So if you find out the overall transfer function by uh, solving this, by combining these two, K1 and K2, suppose we are uh, denoting K1 into K2 as K, so you get K upon S square plus 10S plus K as the overall transfer function. Okay, so you uh, solve this problem, this denominator S square plus 10S plus K and substitute the value of K, vary the value of K from 0 to 50. So suppose initially we take the value of K as 0, so it is S square plus 10S equal to 0. So pole will be, one pole will be at minus 10, the other pole will be at S equal to 0. Right? Now suppose we are keeping the value of K as 5, then you can solve this quadratic equation to find the value of pole 1 and pole 2. Suppose we are keeping the value of k as 5. So it is s square plus 10s plus k plus 5. So if you solve this quadratic equation, you get pole 1 at minus 9.47, pole 2 at minus 0 0.53. Now you increase the value of k to 10. The pole 1 will shift towards minus 8.87 and pole 2 will shift towards minus 1.13. Okay. Again, increase it by 5. So we can put the value of k as 50. You will get these values. At the value of k equal to 25, you will get the pose which lie on the real axis. No imaginary part. So it is at minus 5. The other pole it is double pole at minus 5. So you can uh, draw this diagram and note down the table. Data reading table is if you show the data of the preceding table in graphical display, the following figures will appear, which show that each pole and its gain. So suppose we are showing this S plane having sigma on the real axis, J omega on the complex axis, on the y axis. So it is J1, J2, J3, J4, J5, minus J1, minus J2, minus J3. So and on the real axis, it is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, up to like this, right? So we have a double pole at k equal to minus 5. So it is double pole here. And for k equal to 0, it is minus 10, 0. So for k equal to 0, it is minus 10, right? And in between, we are having these values. You can verify from the table. Hmm. So we observe that as the gain k increases, the closed loop pole, which is at which is at equal, s equal to sigma equal to minus 10 for k equal to 0, moves towards the right. And the closed loop pole, which is at 0 for k equal to 0, move towards left, right, like this. Hmm. So it is my, at minus 10, it moves towards right in this direction. And it reaches minus 5 and then the poles which is at 0, k equal to 0, it moves towards the left in this direction. Hmm? They meet at both from here, they, they proceed towards this and from k equal to 0 my at equal to minus 10, they proceed towards this, right? So we have two poles at k equal to 0, minus 10 and 0. So we have these two poles, they start <clears throat> from this point and they proceed in the opposite direction and they meet at k equal to minus 5. Okay, and break away from the real axis and move into the complex plane like this hmm? in the upper, in both opposite directions. This, this branch will move in this direction, this branch will move in this direction. Okay, one closed loop pole moves upwards and the other closed loop pole moves downwards without being able to tell which pole moves upwards and which pole moves downwards. The representation of the pass of the pole as the gain is varied is called the root locus, right? Like this. Pictorially, we have shown like this. The root locus starts from sigma equal to 0 and sigma equal to minus 10. So they start like this and then one branch proceeds towards positive j omega axis the other branch proceeds towards the negative j axis you can draw this diagram in your notebook
So the root locus, which is a graphical representation of the pole paths as the gain varies, shows the changes in transient response and stability as the gain varies, relates the transient response characteristics of higher order systems to the pole location, and gives the qualitative description of the control system's performance with a less possible computational burden. Okay, so these are the uh, features of root locus. So next we see how we make rapid sketch of the root locus for higher order systems without having to factor the denominator of the closed loop transfer function. For this purpose, we will examine some of the properties of the root locus. Again, the cl closed loop transfer function of the feedback control system is given by Ts equal to Kgs upon 1 plus Kgs Hs. Okay, so the root locus of this system determines the location of closed loop poles as gain k varies. Thus, it is determined by this equation, Kgs Hs equal to minus 1. Suppose, because this is the denominator part, characteristic equation of the system is given by the denominator of the closed loop system equal to 0. Substitute the denominator of the closed loop transfer function equal to 0. So, if you substitute this, then we get Kgs Hs equal to minus 1. You can write this as <coughs> pole <coughs> magnitude polar form is 1 angle 2k plus 1, 180 degrees, where k varies from 0 to plus minus 1, plus minus 2, etc. For which open loop transfer function k, k, kgs hs is to be investigated. Okay, so at a point on the root locus that is a closed loop pole for some particular value of k should satisfy both these two conditions magnitude condition that is magnitude of kgs hs equal to 1 angle condition angle of kgs hs equal to angle gs hs equal to 2k plus 1 into 180 degrees okay so please write down this these two equations if ts is given by this kgs will be given by this and this is the magnitude criteria this is the angle criteria for the root locus system. So, for example, suppose we have a system with following open loop transfer function k into s plus 3 into s plus 4 upon s plus 1 into s plus 2. So, a point in the s plane on the, uh, on the system root locus that is, or closed loop system pole for some value of gain k must satisfy the angle criteria, right? Angle criteria is theta 1 plus theta 2, the angle or due to these zeros, minus theta 3 minus theta 4, right? So, angle, plus, angle for zeros is denoted with positive and angle for pole is denoted with negative because that is, that lies in the denominator part of the system. Okay, so you can, you can find out the angle angle basically this is s plus 3 so angle is minus tan inverse 3 hmm? because it is s equal to sigma plus j omega so sigma plus 3 upon tan inverse imaginary part upon real part so imaginary part is 1 real part is 3 hmm? so tan inverse 1 upon 3 so you can find out the angles for s plus 3 0 s plus 4 0 upon s plus 1 into s plus 2 so angle corresponding to this 0 is 56.31 degrees angle corresponding to s plus 4 is 71.57 angle corresponding to s plus 1 it is basically tan inverse 1 upon 1 so it is tan inverse 1 it is 90 minus 90 tan inverse 1 by 2 is minus 108.43. So you can find out the overall angle which is minus 70.55. Now let us take one point that is minus 2 plus j3, right? Suppose this is the point minus 2 plus j3. This point is not on root locus, that is not a closed loop pole for any gain. So whereas minus 2 plus minus j under root 2 by 2 is so other uh, represent so you can what you can do you can find out the value of k as the length of phasers uh, length of phasor of s plus 1 magnitude s plus 1 magnitude s plus 2 upon magnitude s plus 3 magnitude 
s plus 4. So it is basically s plus 1 is this length, s plus 2 is this length, l2, l3, l4. So basically s plus 1 is l4, s plus 2 is l3, and s plus 3 is l2 and l1. Right? So you can actually measure using uh, the scale, you can measure these values, this length of phasors and substitute those values. So you get this value. Okay. So K becomes equal to 0 0.33. Scale is keeper rakke aapko measure karna hoga. Okay. If you do that, you get this. So basic rules for sketching the root locus is number one, number of branches. The number of branches of the root locus equals the number of closed loop poles. Okay. Number two, symmetry. The root locus is symmetrical about the real axis. Number three, real axis segments. On the real axis for k greater than zero, the root locus exists to the left of the odd number of real axis finite open loop poles and or on finite open loop zeros. Starting and ending points, the root locus begins at the finite and infinite poles of GSHS and ends at finite and infinite zeros of GSHS. Now, what is the behavior at infinity? The root locus approaches straight lines as asymptotes as the root locus approaches infinity. The equation for these asymptotes are given by real axis intercept and angle in radians as follows. So, sigma A is basically summation of finite poles minus summation of finite zeros upon number of finite poles minus number of finite zeros. And theta A is given by 2k plus 1 into pi upon finite poles minus number of finite zeros, where k varies from 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 and the angle is given in radians with respect to the positive extension of the real axis. I want you to note this as the rule for sketching the root locus. Please note it down. So let us take one numerical problem, sketch the root locus for the system shown below. So it is basically k into s plus 3 upon s into s plus 1 into s plus 2 into s plus 4. So let us calculate the asymptotes as the open loop transformation has zeros at infinity. Hmm? So basically if what you do first step is to find out the pole zero location of the system. So you have a zero at s equal to minus 3. So you denote it by a small circle on the real axis at minus 3. Okay. And then you have a pole at s equal to 0, at s equal to minus 1, at s equal to minus 2 and at s equal to minus 4. Okay. So the next step is to find the point of intersection which is the um, asymptote, huh? point of asymptotes. So it, it is basically as I have uh, given you the formula, it is summation of finite poles minus finite zeros upon number of finite poles now upon minus number of finite zeros. So there are four poles, one, two, three, four. So four and one zero. So it is four minus one, which is three. And the pole location is given by minus one, minus two, and minus four. Minus one, minus two, and minus four. And minus the zero location, which is at minus three. Right? So minus one, minus two, minus four, minus minus three. So it is basically the uh, asymptote lies at point minus four upon. So, it is basically 1.33. So, it is at this point. So, sigma A, the point of sigma A is given as the line of intercept at minus 4 by 3. And the angle at which asymptotes will proceed towards infinity is 2k plus 1 pi upon number of poles minus number of zeros. So, pi by 2k plus 1, it is basically k equal to 0, 1 and 2 because there are uh, total number of finite poles is 4 and finite 0 is 3. So it is 4 minus 3. So m is 3. So k will vary from 0, 1 and 2. It is 1 less than total number of finite poles minus finite zeros. So it is for k equal to 0, it becomes pi by 3. For k equal to 1, it becomes 2 plus 1, 3, pi by 3. So it is pi 
then for k equal to 2, 2 into 2, 4 plus 1, 5, 5 by 3, right? So for these angles, the angle of asymptotes will be 5 by 3, pi and 5, 5 by 3. So this is basically pi by 3, which is 60 degrees. Huh? 180 by 3 is 60. So it is 60 degrees. Then pi, which is 180. So this is at one angle. Then 5, 5 by 3. So it is 270. So this angle, angle varies from like 60, then 180, then 270. If the value of k continues to increase, the angle would begin to repeat. Okay. So please note it down on your notebook this example sketch real axis break away and break in points the root locus breaks away from the real axis at a point where the gain is maximum and breaks into the real axis at a point where gain is minimum like this huh? so suppose we have a root locus like this we have zeros at 3 and 5 and we have pole at minus 1 and minus 2 so this pole we, root locus will start from this pole and will start from this pole meet at this point minus sigma 1 and then proceed in this direction and proceed in this direction again they will break this is break in point and this is break away point because at this point the branches are breaking away and pro proceeding towards infinity. Okay, so break away and break in points via difference in differentiation. You can get it with the help of differentiation. For open loop transfer function, k g s h s equal to k into s minus 3 into s minus 5 upon s plus 2 into s plus 2. So differentiate k equal to minus 1 upon G, j sigma h sigma with respect to sigma and derivative take derivative equal to zero so dk by d sigma so if you take derivative with respect to k with respect to sigma of this value so you will get and substitute equal to zero you will get some values of sigmas as minus 1.45 and 3.82 i want you to verify this result by yourself note it down in your notebook My mic was off. So let us take this numerical problem. Right? We have to find out the calculation for j omega axis. Hmm? Suppose we are having overall transfer function like this. So what we do, we take the uh, Ruth Hurwitz criteria. So how to form the root table? You are already familiar. Form the root table. You will get a table like this. And then for this Substitute this equal to 0, that is minus k square minus 65k plus 720 equal to 0. This gives the value of k as 9.65. Then substitute it here in the row above this. Hmm? So 90 minus k s square plus 21k. Hmm? And substitute the value of k as 9.65. So this gives you a value of s which is equal to plus minus j 1.59. This is the j omega crossing value the root locus crosses j omega axis at plus minus j 1.59 with gain equal to 9.65 so stability range is k varies from 0 to 9.65 and at this point this crosses the j omega axis and comes the root locus enters into the real part of the s plane so enters into the instability so please note it down in your notebook The root locus departs from complex open loop poles and arrives at comp complex open loop zeros at an angle that is calculated like this. Suppose we are having a open loop transfer function given by this equation. 
the root locus departs from the pole at e pole equal to minus 1 plus j1 with angle theta 1 such that theta minus theta 1 minus theta 2 plus theta 3 minus theta 4 uh, this is this plus theta 3 is due to this zero mm -hmm. minus theta 4 is this so it is basically minus theta 1 minus 90 plus tan inverse 1 by 1 minus tan inverse 1 by 2 due to this mm -hmm. equal to 180 degrees so this equation gives the value of theta 1 as 108.4 okay so how do we do that we form the pole pole zero location so there is a pole, pole uh, there is a zero at s equal to 2 and there is a pole at s equal to minus 3 right s equal to minus 2 there is a zero s equal to minus 3 there is a pole and at a, po a pole at this and zero at this so this is the angle of departure and this is the angle of angle of arrival this is the angle of departure from complex conjugate pole it departs and at complex conjugate zero it arrives right so you can note down this figure by angle gs h s equal to 2 k plus 1 equal into 180 degrees the gain k at any point on the root locus is given by k equal to 1 upon mod of gs h s okay so what you do you plot the pole zero pole zero configuration of the given system like this suppose we are having a zero a pole at zero pole at minus 1 pole at minus 2 a zero at minus 3 and a pole at minus 4 right so how do you do you take take one point suppose we are taking this point then you join all these poles and zeros to that point and find out the length of the phasors a b c d e right and you find uh, form a circle with radius r and then angle the in terms of degrees huh? so at this point r equal to r equal to the value of r as 0.5 1 1.52 because at this point r is 2 and at this point find out the angle which becomes minus 45 because it is 1 by 1 tan inverse 2 by 1 mm -hmm. because it is at point 2 to find the exact point at which the locus crosses the 0.45 damping ratio line and the gain at that point if a few test points along uh, omega equal to Zeta equal to zero point four five line are selected. We found that the point at radius point seven four seven is on the root locus since the angle add up to minus one eighty degrees. The corresponding gain is given by length of phasors A B C D E upon A C D E upon length of phasor of B because B is the length of phasor by the pole by the zero, right? So it is one point seven one. now sketching a root locus and finding critical points for example sketch the root locus for the system shown below and find the following the exact point and gain where the root locus crosses the 0.45 damping ratio line the exact point and gain where the root locus crosses j omega axis the breakaway point on the real axis and the range of k within which the system is stable suppose the system is given by k into s square minus 4s plus 20 upon s plus 2 into s plus 4 right so first you sketch the root locus using basic rules to yield the figure and then find out the points okay so this i am taking giving you as an exercise for today solve it and draw the root locus and find out these points all right and upload it on the google classroom i am giving you as your assignment for today's class i am uploading this question on the google classroom
to submit the solution. Meanwhile, I'll take your attendance. 